Yo, what is up? It's JJ, and this is another episode of Frame Explain. And this time, I'll be talking about my portrait of NPR's host of how I built this, Guy Raz. So we're going to first start off looking at the final image. And so this is Guy Raz. And if you don't know who this guy is, I implore you to uh, listen to his podcast called How I Built This. And he interviews basically everyone that you would know or even products that you use every day or places that you shop at. So let's just kind of peel back and rewind as far as um, how this portrait came to be before I go into the edits and whatnot. So little background, this is Guy Raz, so just Google him. He's a pretty famous uh, uh, radio host. And this is the website on NPR, a, a, a bio on him and his background. Uh, but again, as I mentioned, he hosts a show called How I Built This. And this is something that I always listen to um, when commuting, when we were commuting um, before the pandemic or while uh, working out. And so he has all these episodes where he essentially asks, you know, all the, the founders of these famous companies, like, for example, there's there's Jazzercise, uh, uh, Patreon, Chipotle, um, and whatnot. And, you know, these are the people that you or rather the people that you may have haven't heard of, but for sure have heard of the podcast. And, you know, he essentially asked the beginnings of the company, how that person, you know, got into the, the company that they built. Um, and then even asked at the very end, you know, is it luck or was it, you know, hard work that um, what made the company that it is today? So definitely recommend this because um, you'll learn a whole lot again with with business. So because I've been a big fan of it, uh, it was announced that the uh, the first summit, the uh, NPR's How I Built This Summit, was going to be in San Francisco. And so at the Yerba Buena uh, Performing Center of the Arts. And, um, you know, at the time in 2018, I remember getting an email while I was in New Orleans with my mom. Um, it was like a belated Christmas gift where took her wherever. And so she chose New Orleans. And I got an email of that the tickets would be available. And the funny thing is that we were actually with a at a walking tour. <laughs> so of course my mom was kind of getting annoyed. She was like, hey, we're doing this walking tour. Why are you on your phone other than taking photos? And I mentioned to her that I, I wanted to to buy tickets to, you know, to the summit. So, you know, here we are taking I think a, a trolley in uh, downtown in, in New Orleans. And I ended up buying a ticket. And because I was a big fan and because I, I do like learning as we as we all should, I ended up paying a, a pretty, you know, deep price for this ticket. It was nine hundred thirty five dollars and ninety two cents. And the early bird premiere one, um, there was like a, a mixer. There was like a networking event that you can go to meet other people with uh, with like minds who would pay this amount and kind of just network from there. But also you get a. Um, like access to like a panel where you can get help from other people, like almost like a, a mentoring program. So I think it was worth it. I mean, obviously it's pretty up there, but I would also compare this to basically like music concert tickets. I think most people like or want the VIP experience and you know, what you get out of it is of course, um, I guess what you want from it, right? So for me, I wanted to network, I wanted to get access. And it was a two, I forget, two, uh, yeah, two day summit. So for me, it was, it was pretty worth it. Um, and that's me walking in into the, uh, the show or the summit, got my pass. And then I, um, yeah, put it on Instagram that, yep, I'm a fan. And it is pretty cool because again, this is a podcast that you typically listen to by yourself. And so when I was meeting people left and right in the auditorium, you know, we were just kind of chopping it up like, hey, did you did you listen to that episode or what was your favorite episode? And it was it was fun. So now we're going to talk about. Um, I don't know why this is. Uh, there you go. We're going to talk about how I got Guy to agree to do a photo shoot. So. For me, when I do these um, when I do these events, or rather when I attend events, typically I have uh, an ulterior motive. Ulterior motive, right? So I'm going there, of course, uh, first and foremost to learn from it and be a guest. At the same time, you know, with with crossing fingers wise, if I'm able to 
have somehow access to that person, um, you know, I'll bring a camera. And, you know, while, of course, you can take a selfie, like, you know, what ended up happening here, of course, when people are like, oh, my gosh, this guy Ross, can we, you know, take a quick selfie? Um, for me, I wanted something that I can basically say, hey, I photographed Guy Raz. So I will say that this is one way to kind of hack your way and getting access. But of course, um, depending on the person, depending on their their like celebrity status, you you probably won't have access to them. Like say a musician uh, who's, who's toured the world probably wouldn't be like, yeah, okay, I'll agree to a, a photo shoot. So Luckily, during lunch, um, I I was, you know, chatting with some other people, but I ended up seeing Guy, right? And so you can see here in this first photo um, that he was taking some selfies. And I, I, I quickly scouted, so I went outside. Um, I kind of figured out his path. So this is like, may sound creepy, but like, you just kind of have to know what, where to predict where that person would be and make it just super convenient, right? So that's the point you know, besides the creepy part, just make this super convenient that the person would be like, yeah, okay, sure. It, it'll only take like how long again? And to bring up to my next point, I, I scouted a location. I got my settings already for my camera and I only brought a, uh, it's like a Fuji XE3. It's a very, it's a pretty small camera, uh, very entry level too. So it wasn't looking like I was a, a, a professional. And so sometimes having equipment big or small could be to your advantage, right? So if I had, say, my Pentax camera, he'd be like, oh, like, are you, are you press or what is this for? But I kind of just look like a regular attendee and I just had a camera on me and I said, hey, can I just do a quick photo shoot? So as mentioned, um, I scouted the location and luckily I found a shaded white wall. So the light was bounced very nicely and I was able to pull him aside, say, hey guy, I obviously I'm a big fan and can we do a quick photo shoot? It'll take like a minute. I just want to be able to, uh, to take a quick headshot. I don't remember if that's what I said. I, I think that's how I would sort of say it, but even hearing myself right now, there probably is a better way to ask something like that. Um, but again, just kind of establishing, uh, the time frame. Okay. Most people who are busy, most people who have like a status, they kind of don't really want to give a lot of time because again, their time is usually pulled in different directions. And so by me saying like, this will take less than a minute and truthfully it did, we will look at the, the EXIF data as well, showing the, the timestamps, um, you know, how many photos I took and then when did I start and when did it end? But again, the importance is here is that you're prepared, you come in, you, you've done your, your homework in terms of scouting um, and you take your photo. So in this particular set, I literally took three shots and you'll see that two of them were out of focus. So again, I'm using uh, the Fuji X-E3 camera. It's an entry level. I have center uh, AF. Usually that's my settings for all cameras. And for this one, luckily I was using the, uh, the 56 millimeter 1.2. So it is a nice lens, but it can be slow depending on the camera. Again, I was using an entry level camera. So let me just pull up the EXIF data so I can just show you the sequence here. So I actually fired three shots in, in which the first shot was um, the, the winning shot, okay? So let me just also show you the before as well. So that was the before. So nothing too crazy um, in terms of the uh, the edit. I just, we'll get into that in terms of what I, what I did do. But you'll see here that this was at Again, at lunchtime, 12.16 with 29 seconds. Next frame, um, can't do math, three seconds later. And then the last shot was, again, like five seconds later from, from the first shot. So I quickly did, um, you know, three shots, boom, boom, boom. Guy, thank you so much, man. Shook his hand. And, you know, I said probably like looking forward to the, to the next part of, of the summit. So... Literally, that was less than a minute, right? That was probably, you know, yeah, less than 10 seconds in total from getting him over. And the crazy part, too, by the way, when you are, um, when you're bringing a talent, uh, of course, when other people are there, especially in a public area, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And they want to do exactly what I did, which is pull him away to to have a quick chat. So for me, the location was was perfect, right? It was just like, 
I don't know, a few yards away from where he was when I spotted him. And I said, hey, guy, there's a there's a spot right here. Um, you know, it's going to look really great. Kind of just giving that assurance and pulling him aside and to be able to pull this off, right? Again, within 10 seconds. So obviously, these are the shots, the outtakes that just did not work. Um, that one, obviously, out of focus, out of focus. But luckily, this one where I didn't apply the settings yet, worked out okay so we can get into that right now is what i basically uh what i basically use in terms of the edit so you'll see let me just make this a a virtual copy real quick so that way i don't mess up the uh, the finished photo so here's the here's the um after and i just realized i can't do it before because i just made a virtual copy but you'll see that the exposure was technically there, but I brought it down to to negative 0.2. Um, highlights increased it. Shadows increase whites um, pulled back a little bit, and blacks also pulled back. So when we look at the the raw the raw take. It, again, it's not that bad. It's just missing some contrast and saturation. And you'll also notice that it's very close, right? So with, with the 56 millimeter lens, um, yeah, it, it's like the background that I had was, it was white, but it was also a banner. It was a back of a banner in shade. And so luckily the, the banner was thick enough that you just didn't really see the, the, the printing on the other side. So it was because it was narrow, I knew that my, my window was just really small, but I figured in post, I'll be doing some magic. So did the edits here. Um, it also looks like I was using a, a Visco filter. Um, I wanna say I was, or unless there's a profile. It says Polaroid 690. But as mentioned in the first video, I have these you know vintage Visco filters on Lightroom that I don't think they sell anymore. And let me just take this down to Photoshop. So going back into the final file, the final take, you'll see that magically uh, his shoulders are, are there and I made it essentially a square crop. So it was perfect for, for Instagram, but again, it just needed a little bit more breathing room from that vertical shot. So going to Photoshop, what I ended up doing was I extended it. So you'll see here that I basically was cloning. Um, I was cloning his shoulders to essentially build his suit. Um, and you can see here that it looks kind of off here, right? So let me see if I actually fix that. Yep. So these are the layers that I'm showing right now where I noticed that one, his shoulder dropped was, was a little too extreme on this part. And I ended up just cloning, um, copying his shoulder and just pasting it. And then you'll see right here, what I ended up doing was just having to smooth it, smooth it out. So there you go. And you'll see here too that, you know, the background is not completely white. So I also removed that as well. The, uh, the backdrop again, wasn't a pure white. So there it is, right? That's before. And after and for me to do that usually what I'll what I do is I, I I duplicate the layer below and then I create a new layer I flatten that one together and then I'm just using you know the clone tool and I'm just cloning that out so let's see what else did I do here so and there's and those are the edges so now it looks like this is the after and that's before so now it looks like we, we had a very strong light source on the back that's kind of adding that glow. But it also kind of hides, you know, some Photoshop um, mistakes as well, if I had any. And that's that's essentially the uh, the final image. Um, I think I, I probably added some sharpening as well. I'm a fan of high pass uh, sharpening method. And I made a um, uh, an action right here to do so where it duplicates it and it applies the high pass at a small uh, opacity. And that is essentially the image that I made of Guy Raz. 
So if there's uh, any questions, any comments on that, do, um, do leave them below. And again, do subscribe, you know, um, hopefully my, my whole take with, uh, with these series with Frame Explain is one, it's kind of just fun for me to look back with, with my work and also just give a story about how the image was made. So the, the technique part uh, obviously is important to, to pull this off to make this edit, but sometimes like these little tidbits I feel like could be helpful for those who are just wondering like, well, how do I photograph you know this person or how do I photograph or get access to certain people? So for me, it was attending the summit, but again, I was a, an attendee first and I enjoyed my time. And I'm personally looking forward to the next summit if it's gonna happen again in San Francisco in 2021. Peace.